Coming up on Tech News Today, we'll give you the scoop on a possible Google Chrome OS tablet, not an Android tablet. Also, Microsoft's coming out with a banana mouse. We'll explain. And not one, but two double rainbow illusions. Double, double rainbow illusions. What are they two? Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hey everybody, Tom Merritt here. We had a little problem with the recording of TNT, so if you notice that the quality isn't so good, it'll get better. About 15 minutes in, we get to the real recording. We had to do a little flim-flammery capturing sort of thingy. So our apologies, but at least we got the whole episode to you. We weren't even sure if we could get that. So please, thank you for your patience. Enjoy. This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, August 18th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com, bonus code TNT, and also by squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. And I'm Becky Worley. And on the boards is our producer, John Slanina, a.k.a. Jammer B. Hello. How's it going? Eric is in the Chamber of Secrets today. <laughs> they've, got, they've got him editing something terrible. You made it secret. sound exciting, like he was up there with Hermione or something. He is. He's defeating he who will not be named. Oh, Voldemort. <laughs> or Voldemort. Some people know him as Voldemort. All right. Uh, did you notice my voice broke when I tried to say his name? You did. It was your cursed. Google is going to launch a Chrome OS tablet on Verizon on November 26th, according to sources of the Download Squad blog. Sources. Unnamed sources. And that date, just in case we were wondering to continue our nefarious theme, that's Black Friday, the busiest shopping day of the year. Oh, my gosh. Viernes Negro? Sí, sí. <laughs> that's um, like my prom day like that is the big shopping day and the biggest um for for really gadgets so i mean it's interesting that they would drop their product if this rumor is true on that date um what's the marketing strategy there well the, the market, bigger, yeah yeah the marketing strategy there is let's let's get people to buy them instead of the ipad because it's difficult and we, we've seen lots of projections for holiday 2010 that the iPad is going to be a huge gift. So they have to get in there for the Q4 shopping season. Um, but Chrome tablet on Verizon, and one of the rumors in here was that it would be obscenely subsidized, even free. You buying that? I don't buy that it'll be free. I, I'm not even sure I buy this entire rumor, but uh, I think that we could see a $99 Chrome OS tablet because Chrome OS is fairly limited, uh, but it would have to be a fairly limited piece of hardware to go well, along with it. And and so that lends credence to the idea of like, you know what? You want to get into this space. You want to be the low-end version. You want to be the bargain tablet on Black Friday that everyone rushes out and gobbles up because it looks like it's an incredible deal. Well, if the, the rumors to be believed, the specs on the hardware is pretty impressive. Let me read this off to you. It says uh, 1280 by 720 multi-touch display, 2 gigs of RAM, minimum 32 gigs SSD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, GPS, get this, webcam, and possibly expandable storage via some sort of multi-card reader. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot packed that into is, that a is low-cost tablet. That is the speculation of the Download Squad blogger, though. That doesn't even come from the sources. So, that's a spec speculation. Yeah, that's put the put the spec in speculation. Definitely, <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, also, Chrome Web Store coming in October. According to a presentation at the Game Developer Conference in Europe, 1UP.com has a report out with pictures and video of Google's Mark Delora and Michael Mayamoff explaining how developers will be able to submit apps to the store, which was announced back in May. This is the, this is the thing that I still can't wrap my head around why you would need, but I guess in Google Chrome OS, having a little store where you could go and install applications wouldn't be such a bad idea. Uh, well, 
And what may drive it is this little behind-the-scenes nugget. It said they're only going to charge developers a 5% processing fee as opposed to the 30% cut from, say, an Apple store. Yeah, so, so it's 5%, that's a big difference. 5% off instead of 30% off really encourages you to make an app for this, but they're going to have to have an installed base of people using Chrome OS if you really want to get into it. So that lends credence to the idea of a Verizon Google Chrome tablet of some sort coming out in late November because if they open up the store in October, that then they start getting it stocked uh, so that they have a bunch of applications in there when the pad actually launches. But I do have to travel this well-traveled path on the issue of Chrome versus Android. I mean, really, a Chrome OS pad, um, it just seems to me like this is weird marketing that you would segment your user understanding of your product when you think that the average consumer, they're like, it's, they still think of Android or the Nexus One as the Google phone. And so if you ask them to try and understand Android versus Chrome, why are they splintering this market? I don't get it. I, I used to be, when Google first announced Chrome OS, I thought, oh, well, you know, Android is for, is for phones, and, and having another operating system for tablets is not such a bad idea. Apple tries to pretend like it's one OS, but really, because when you come out with for instance, iOS 4, and it doesn't go to the iPad, the iPad gets 3.22 or 3.23, it shows that these aren't exactly the same operating system. I get that, but people have been making more and more Android tablets, and you can definitely have various flavors and implementations of Android, so I'm not certain, st I, I'm still a little bit, I'm starting to be a little bit less clear about why you need Chrome OS, but I do understand that it's a different animal. It, it is a an operating system within a browser, and it's meant to be very limited, whereas Android is more like a traditional operating system where you install applications uh, and and you you're, you don't have everything working on the web. Chrome OS works every, everything in the browser, whether it's on or offline. It's just essentially a big browser. So I I don't know. Dr. Trafiki in the um in the chat room says just call it. Trandroid. Like at a certain point, it's they're all going to meld. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. All right, Verizon has a uh, a new iPad app they're talking about putting out. According to New TV, it would allow FiOS subscribers to watch the same linear programming that's available on their TV screens on the iPad. Catch is you only get to watch it in your house when you're on your FiOS connection. So you're out and about, and you're in some other Wi-Fi network, and you can't watch the TV that you're already paying for at home. What I want to know is, if I subscribe to Fios TV and not Fios Internet, is this iPad app not going to work for me? Yikes. I mean, okay, let's just try and play devil's advocate here. All right, so this is a, an add-on, and maybe the app is going to be free, and they're saying, hey, you know what? If you're paying for it home, we'll basically let you use your iPad as sort of like another TV. You can take it out in the garage since that old analog one doesn't work and pick up uh, over-the-air signals anymore. But I think they're actually going to engender more um, sort of backlash than goodwill by doing this because people will see that it's just them limiting the fact that they can't watch when they're out in other Wi-Fi networks. Yeah, it's kind of, I, I, I don't know, I'm more impressed by the HBO announcement. Uh, HBO has been in the news for not being able to come to an agreement with Netflix, but they are expanding their own offering. So if you're a subscriber to HBO, you can watch shows, uh, I think it's some 800 plus shows, on the web, on your desktop or your PC or your laptop. They're going to come out with an iPad app as well so that you'll be able to watch the HBO shows on your iPad. Not, not that big of a deal, but that... That's more impressive to me somehow than being able to watch linear Verizon stuff when I'm home on my Verizon Fios that I can't get because I don't live in that area. But even if I did, versus the HBO app, which I can watch in a hotel or on a plane or wherever I go. I think if you're comparing the Verizon to the HBO uh, opportunity there, obviously you're going to be happier with HBO. You're like, hey, I'm paying for it already. I should be able to watch it anywhere I want. But as a Netflix subscriber, I'm ticked because I'm just annoyed that Netflix isn't becoming the de facto standard for distribution for a lot of these channels. And if you want to tier my Netflix to give me access to Stars or to HBO, oh, uh, yeah. that, then I'm interested. But I, you know, I'm waiting. I'm really kind of bummed that HBO is going for their own app instead of m kind of integrating grading more. Um, and that's just me, the consumer, speaking out. When you think of it as a business model, I can understand their choice. But hopefully, um, the, the, the trajectory here is that HBO will realize resistance is futile. I got to get in the Netflix family. I think, yeah, I think Netflix d wants to avoid subscriber confusion. So right now, it's how many discs I get gives me my price. 
and then I get the unlimited streaming for free. Because they used to have like, well, you'll get eight hours a month if you pay eight dollars, and you you know it was it was all tied into how much you paid. And they found that that was too confusing, so they went to this like it's unlimited streaming for everybody, no matter how much you pay. But I think as the discs thing starts to fade away and becomes less impressive that you might be able to switch it over and add in a few tiers, like you're saying, where you could say, oh, I get the Netflix basic or the Netflix with movies, for instance. Well, Stars is already in there, though. You don't yeah, have to pay and, extra on Netflix for Stars. Yeah, but um, Asimov in the chat room is saying Stars on Netflix is crap, and I would totally agree. You every once in a while get something decent, or if you want to see something that's sort of a legacy product. But I, I really hope that, that we do see a, um, a little bit more um, content coming in and that Netflix realizes that consumers are willing to pay in these incremental amounts. So we'll see. This episode of TNT is brought to you by Gazelle. If you've got some old gadgets lying around, and believe me, I have a garage full of them <laughs> right now. Uh, smartphones, MP3 players, laptops, old speakers, gaming consoles. Uh, we know you've got those too. So here's how you get rid of them without the hassle. My problem is I'm sitting there thinking... Oh, I got to go list it on eBay or something or Craigslist, and then I'm answering calls. Gazelle is a much easier way to sell your stuff, and you get a good price for it, too. I took my iPhone the other day. I went on to gazelle.com. I looked it up. I got the price. I said, yes, I want to sell it. Here's the condition it's in. They said, do you want to print out a shipping label now, or do you want us to send you a box? I said, I'm extra lazy today. Send me the box. So they're sending me a box that I'm going to pack it in. I'll send it off to them. They'll deposit uh, an amount in my PayPal. And in fact, they, they can do it in lots of different ways. They can send you a check. Uh, they, can, they can make a uh, deposit into PayPal. Uh, you can even get a, uh, an, an Amazon gift certificate. There's several different gift certificate options. Uh, and if for a 5% bonus on the amount you get, use the bonus code TNT. So go sell some gadgets, clean out your closets, make some, make some change off stuff. You know, if you think you, you can go to, to really push up that price to the very max, maybe, but you might as well check up gazelle.com to see what they're going to give you because it might be just as much as you could make anyway, and it's a Tom, whole lot easier. Tom, I have easier. a great idea. What is it? Let's have a gazelle -thon. Let's pick some charities and encourage the Twit Army and you and me, and we'll videotape ours. Let's go through our garages and pull all of our old gadgets out and gazelle them and give the money to charity. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> I, 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 you I, I kind of wanted to keep the money. No, no, it's a great idea. I think I, I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we could we could uh, we could even stream it. That could be we fun. Could, we, could, we could we could video it. All right, I like this. I like this. Okay, we have to pick a, a gazelle -a We need some it's suggestions on. of good charities though. Uh, but, yeah. but I like it. So for a five yeah. percent bonus, use the bonus code TNT at gazelle dot com. As they say, don't just sell it, gazelle it. You know, in the chat room, they now think you need to be on that show, Hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there are lies being told. Lies, lies, lies by your broadband ISP. All of them. Ars Technica has an article uh, telling that FCC has been looking into the advertised speeds of United States broadband providers and finds out that on average, a mere 50% of the up to speed that is advertised is delivered to folks who subscribe to various broadband ISPs. Yeah, uh, it's not quite as it's advertised. I thought this data was fascinating, not just in terms of how uh, people are getting slower broadband than they thought, but I looked at it and 45% of all users that they surveyed are getting two megabits per second or less in total speed. That's slow. Yes, that's, it's extremely uh, slow. When, you, when you're paying for more, Right. And and different different ISPs are going to be different. This is why I like broadbandreports.com, because you can go see reported speeds from speed tests that users have done to find out at which ISPs are actually on which side of that 50 percent. Uh, but, yeah, the, the median, the 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 mean, all of those numbers were bad. And so I'm thinking we adopt the uh, policy they have in Hungary where they make your ISP tell you a minimum speed as well as the up to speed. Oh, yeah, I went and looked at the actual charts, and so they list all the carriers, and then it has on one side, maximalis, five megabytes. Mm-hmm. 
Now the problem bits. the problem with this plan though is that you end up with a bunch of ISPs giving really bad minimums because well, they the minimums were one megabit per yeah. second. It was one one megabit throughput on on the upside and uh, five on the upside and one on the downside. I was like, whoa, that's pretty bad. There's a DSL here that's 128 kilobits per second max, 64 kilobits per second minimum, and and the reason they do that is. They, they don't want to ever get caught going under. So they're going to set that, that lower speed as low as possible. But at least you get a fair idea of what this uh, company may be capable of, right? Oh, okay, well, that's your philosophy, but I have a different philosophy. I think that all advertisements for broadband should carry the same um, warnings and disclaimers that all of the drug ads do on TV, that they have to have that like legal disclaimer. So I wrote mine. This is what would come May after cause the broadband. And Ready? It, if you live less than 27 yards from the backbone central router, you may get the advertised speeds. Actual speeds may vary. You may get as little as 56K downloads. Please consult the Geek Squad member if you feel that you are not getting any actual throughput at all. If your erection lasts more than four hours, please consult the physician. Wait, that, what was the last one? <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with broadband speed, does it? I'm just saying. Besides, that's hard to read. <laughs> but you know, I, I was just, that was my tryout in case they well, actually you know, do this. Well, you the, know, the, the, uh, the, pharmacies now the pharmaceutical companies they do it slower they don't do the fast read anymore they do the like very nice pictures that distract you from the fact that they're talking about anal leakage right now and you see <laughs> butterflies and and uh, you know it's like wait wait what did they say oh i'm seeing butterflies i don't care they lull fine. you to sleep yeah. with their dulcet tones exactly so i think that needs to uh, i think that needs to be on I think you're right. I'm with you. The pharmaceutical level, but that's, that only works for TV. Plus, cable <laughs> doesn't have a minimum speed because everybody's on the node, right? So, I mean, if you get too many people going on the node, at one, your minimum speed could be zero. It's hard to actually sense a minimum speed. So, I don't know what the solution is. It's a good awareness point. I mean, and it's just holding all of these broadband companies accountable and letting them know that they are being monitored. And I think the FCC is actually doing a good job with this central testing area where people can easily go if they don't know about broadband reports or something like that and just check their speeds and then call and say, hey. So, it's it's accountability. It's a slow process. Hopefully, it'll move forward. Just know that that advertised speed is about 50% and you'll be safe. Right. And uh, also that broadband speeds may cause death. <laughs> uh, the music business has got some good news for once. Uh, no, a poll by Norstadt, a Norwegian music service, reckons that 54% of people who use streaming services such as Spotify have stopped downloading music illegally. This reported in the register. 68% uh, say they are playing more music as a result with a strong discovery element as well. 72% saying they're discovering more music. So I think, uh, I think my long-held belief that once we get ubiquitous internet and it's really easy to stream music from from the internet whenever you want which is kind of where we're going right now with mobile devices nobody's going to want to mess with having to download individual tracks and keep track of them and sync them up they just want to have the service that plays the music they like available and especially ones like spotify which give you a lot of customization options it's like why would I why would I bother with all of that hassle? For some people, that's what they're thinking. I completely agree. From a consumer's perspective, ease of use, no viruses, and a full catalog. That's all I want. I'm willing to pay for it. Price it reasonably. Is that so much to ask? Yeah, it's not. Uh, so I, I think streaming music service can actually end the whole debate about DRM. I don't think we're gonna be able to have the same situation with video though. Uh, I think in, in a certain way, your Hulus and, and, and things like that might have an ability to cut down on piracy that way. Uh, but a lot of folks want to have a movie sitting on their hard drive versus a song uh, all the time. Ver I don't know. I guess if you could just stream it on demand, though, if, if the Internet got better, better enough. Maybe my resistance is just the fact that broadband isn't fast enough to support good quality streaming video all the time, right? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I think that's the, the case is when the technology all meshes up. I mean, we've got 1080p, 240 hertz TVs right now. And when you're watching, as we were just talking about Netflix, when I'm streaming on something on it, the blacks look like junk. They're all grayed and mottled. And I'm thinking I could be watching this on, you know, anything and it would look the same. So I think once there's a mesh there and we see the compression hitting places where we can actually maximize our hgtvs then who wants a bunch of discs in your house yeah exactly i you just well 
for some people, it's still going to be a collector's deal, right? They're going to want to have that boxed set with all of the little full inserts and the fact that they have the object. I think that will never go away to a certain extent, but it will get smaller and smaller and smaller. But, okay, but some people would make that same argument for records and the, Well, I think that's know, why we haven't seen vinyl disappear. Because most, you've for got, all practical purposes, it's gone. It's actually making a resurgence. We're selling more vinyl all the time. And the little that we sell is to that that segment that I'm talking about. That segment's well, like, enough, you know enough. what? I just want to have that collector's item. I want to have the vinyl of R.E.M.'s new album or whatever. Yeah, I think the same metric is too for lunch boxes too, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good example. Mm -hmm. CNET reporting that Sandy Bridge will be Intel's next micro architecture, redesign of its processors. And uh, for the first time on any Intel chip sandy bridge will include silicon dedicated to handling transcoding uh, of data from one format to another so i think the most obvious use for this is video uh, transcoding circuits will be separate from the main processor and the on chip graphics function according to sources at system makers transcoding uh, allows you to you know take one video and convert it to ipod for instance if it's a if it's a, a big avi you can squeeze stuff down so this should help folks especially in video editing and video conversion situations also it will be the first mainstream intel chip to integrate the graphics functions onto the same piece of silicon as the main processor is different than an integrated GPU or the integrated graphics. This will be a GPU integrated on the same piece of silicon. And that's possible because of the 32 nanometer manufacturing tech that Intel has been using. So, you know, it's early, it's early to make any actual uh, assessments of it. But Sandy Bridge looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Well, Sandy Bridge, I saw her when she was in Peter Pan, the musical, and I thought she was great. But that's, I that's think San, that Sandy Duncan. Oh, oh, God. Next story. Uh, yeah, you don't have anything else to say about Sandy Bridge? <laughs> I'm, ex I'm excited. I know you're excited. All right. I'm, I think it's, you know, I, like I'm going to geek out on chip architecture. Come on. You were geeking gotta... out a little bit about it on it in prep. That's all. That's well, all you, I know. You know. I thought you hit the interesting points that it has dual processes, that it's not GPU on the, you know, embedded. It's, it was interesting. I don't know if enough about chips to say anything that's going to really keep our uh, audience uh, riveted. So I'll just stick with my Sandy Duncan joke. <laughs> what about the Microsoft Arc Touch? <gasps> I'm excited about this. this uh, t tell us about this. Well, this is Microsoft's new mouse that's ergonomically correct. It's uh, rumored to uh, be retailing soon for about $69. And what's different about this wireless mouse is that your hand sits at an angle up high. Um, so it's sort of like a, a rainbow or a bridge, um, not a sandy bridge. But uh, it it's supposed to be more ergonomically correct for all you poor carpal tunnel people. And I was going around my kitchen looking for something that would simulate. Gosh, what would that feel like? I wonder if it's good. And I found these two bananas. And it's the perfect thing to simulate what it would be like. You know, kind of the arc of the banana as my hand rests over it. And you know what? It's really comfortable. The and arc it's more of the banana. And what it does is it keeps your wrist at the high point, if the bananas are like the Microsoft mouse. It keeps your wrist at the high point as opposed to your wrist being at the low point and your knuckles being up high. So I love, I mean, I love I.O. devices because I think they're under underdeveloped, really, when you think about how much of our, our, our computer experience is based on that. So, yes, the arc of the banana has made me uh, very excited about this rumored Microsoft mouse. Double banana, man! <laughs> what does it mean? Oh, I don't know! Whoa. Uh, they will be charging 70 euros, or possibly also $70, uh, is the rumor for the Microsoft Arc Touch mouse, but... I see. Okay, now we're even. I I, I hogged the Nahalem or the uh, Sandy Bridge story. So I, I let you. You you're really excited about the Arc Touch? That's cool. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's thank our other sponsor uh, for today's show. This episode is also brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high quality website or blog. Squarespace has easy to use UI for creating and managing a website or blog. For instance, this very morning. I got an email from Miss M. I don't know if she's in the chat room right now. Yes, yeah, she is. And she said, hey, there's no search function on your forecast podcast website. I was like, oh. So I went. I logged into Squarespace, which I used to, to make forecastpodcast.com. And I found the search widget. And I added it to the left side and then emailed her back. Done. It, was that, it, would, it would have been so much more difficult in a lot of other situations. With Squarespace, I just add that module. Boom. I've got search. 
added. Why didn't I have search? I don't know. I'm an idiot, but now I do. It's idiot proof. That's what's great about Squarespace. They have Google Maps. They have permission access handling, cloud architecture for speed and site stability. So if you know what you're doing, if you're an expert, you can go in there and you can modify the CSS. But if you're lazy like me, you don't have to. You can just add stuff and create things very easily. For a free trial, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TNT. I believe now, Becky, is it not time for the news fuse? It is, Tom. Canonical announced today that the next version of Ubuntu after Maverick Meerkat will come after Maverick Meerkat comes out in October will be called Natty Narwhal Ubuntu 11.04. Scheduled for April 28th. ARM compatibility, design refinement, and improved graphics hardware support will be priorities for the Narwhal. <laughs> the second beta of Windows Live Essentials 11 was released today, which contains Windows Live Messenger, Windows Live Photo Gallery, Windows Live Mail, Windows Live Sync, and other Windows Live products. The update includes publishing videos to Flickr from Movie Maker, better support for Gmail spam and trash folders, and larger video uploads to SkyDrive. T-Mobile is promoting its first HSPA Plus Android phone named the G2. It will be the first smartphone to run on their HSPA Plus network, which T-Mobile bills as running at 4G speeds, even though it's more appropriately considered at very fast 3G implementation. According to research from Current Analysis, Verizon is testing an unlimited nationwide talk and text plan for just $69.99. This is in San Diego and their Los Angeles retail outlets. And this is important because it's $20 less than the current price nationwide. And coupled with a $29.99 data plan, we're looking at a monthly fee that's within pennies of Sprint's Simply Everything plan. Competitions get stiff. Microsoft's Flight Simulator is set to make a comeback. The sim is in its early development stages with an alpha version nearly ready for internal testing, according to Kevin Unangst, a senior director in Microsoft's game unit. Also, Age of Empires is coming back as an online game. Age of Empires Online is further along. The company is now taking signups for a public beta set to begin later this year. Apple has been awarded two patents that are prominent in iOS 4, the slide to unlock feature and the pop-up letters that appear when you're typing on the keyboard. Apple applied for the patents two years ago, and having used Microsoft's Connect, I wonder if this is going to be a challenge to the way that Connect starts. You have to actually reach your hand across uh, the playing field, the screen, and zip to, st to start the game. It seems awfully similar, but hard to know if the touch interface will be the distinguisher there. Right. I, th I think that that's the interesting thing is that this gives them a patent on the graphic layout. I think it doesn't pass the obvious test. Like, really? A sliding something to unlock? I, I, because it's graphically represented instead of the millions of ways we slid things to unlock things in the past? I don't see how they grant this, but they did. Uh, so I, I, I don't think... Apple will go after Microsoft. I think even if there is a, a claim of something, it'll be one of those background, like, you sue us, we'll sue, sue you, so nobody gets sued sort of things. <laughs> patent wars. Don't uh, want to get in. The patent wars. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, finally, we got a few uh, funnier stories here. Uh, it looks like someone jailbroke Justin Long's iPhone. Uh, he was on, uh, uh, which one? Was he on Jimmy Kimmel? Kimmel. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. He was on Jimmy Kimmel, and they had his iPhone hooked up to a big screen so that you could see it. And if you, if you look at the uh, Engadget story, they have a great screen capture where you see the Cydia app sitting there right on the screen, although it looks like Cydia and a TV out uh, app were, are in the position they would be if they had just been installed. So the guess is probably a producer backstage said, oh, we want to be able to show your iPhone on, on the big screen, so let me jailbreak it really quick so we can do that. And Justin Long, for those of you who don't know, is the Mac guy in the Mac versus PC commercials. So the fact that he gets paid by, oh, Apple, and then he jailbreaks his phone, and it was actually for a really good reason. He was showing this hilarious text conversation he had with this teenage girl who texted him thinking he was someone else. And I, you, it's worth watching because it's just classic um, portrayal of tween teen culture today. But it, he had a good reason. But you got to wonder, uh, is he going to get in trouble with Steve? I don't know. Apparently his contract is uh, is no longer valid. That they, They've pulled the plug on the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC ads. So he's, mm. I guess he's free to jailbreak away now. Voided his warranty, though. Yep. He could sue that producer at Kimmel. 
<laughs> you voided my warranty, man. Dude. Also, uh, in other Apple news, uh, Philip Shoemaker, the director of applications technology at Apple, he's the guy that oversees the approval of App Store apps. Uh, it has been revealed, operates a company named Gray Noodle that puts apps in the App Store. What kind of apps does he have? I'm trying to make it for you. Oh, that's <laughs> disgusting. I know. Mm-hmm. It's a fart Doesn't app. Doesn't even sound real. I know. It has. It's terrible. It has one. This is the only one that's really significant. Is that? Oh, it's a. Uh, is that iWiz? Yeah, but you know what? This is. I just. I'm really disgusted that we're even talking about this, because this is the worst fart app I've ever seen. <laughs> See, you allowed, you allowed the, those crappy fart apps in when you're <laughs> when you're the director. Now, Apple says that these apps were made, submitted, and approved before Shoemaker took over the job at Apple. Although. Uh, Wired.com looked at the date of Shoemaker's Twitter that he said, hey, I'm working at Apple now. And it looked, it looked at the date of the approval of animal farts, I think, and said, wait a minute, the one is before the other. So something squeezed in under the deadline. But he hasn't, he hasn't submitted a bunch since. No, and the, Apple did say they hired him because he had developer experience. All those tweets have since been removed. And I think that the point is moot. Because, as I'd like to say one more time, this is the worst fart app ever. I, is there any other point of this story? I mean, I've reviewed a lot of fart apps, and this is bad. Really? You've this reviewed is... a lot of fart apps? Well, personally. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's a story here. So the guy made some apps before he started. Maybe a couple squeezed in after he started. Maybe they didn't. He hasn't made a bunch since. They're not even that good of apps. I get, everybody's just so... This is what happens when you run a walled garden. Everyone gets really picky about the process for approval. And they're like, oh, so your fart apps get approved, but a mine can't? And, and the Wired story pointed out that, you know, this is this is a lot of to do about Apple has to make a ton of discretionary calls. And they're not, uh, you know, it's the, the one most of the fart apps that have been denied have had um, graphic images in them that they felt were mm. um, too anatomically correct, shall we say. And then, you know, the Wired app pulls out things that had a religious um, kind of a, a component of, of, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, just sort of not mockery, but, you know, um, they were just looking at religion from a comical side of view and they were saying, hey, that could offend some people in a way that's not funny right. and scatological, but in a, this is what I believe kind of way. So I, I have some sympathy for Apple in that they have to make a lot of tough calls and they're never going to get it right all the time and they're never going to make everybody happy. One thing that does make everybody happy is a look at the calendar. Yes, it does. Sometimes I like to tell you about things that are coming up down the line. And this one really interests me. This is September 13th and 14th in San Francisco. It's App Nation. It's the first global conference and exposition to focus exclusively on fart apps. Just kidding. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> it will cover social and mobile apps across all devices and platforms. And uh, speakers, Adobe, North Face, Marvel, Sequoia Partners, Smule, Time, Wall Street Journal, blah, blah, blah. I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I, I I think so too, and it's right here in San Francisco. Although I would rather be sent to um to the uh, the one in London because they do that that big app app thing in London, and the only mm -hmm. reason is because I already live here. Yeah, yeah, you can go across the bridge, buddy. Good for you. Also on the calendar, of course, we've been mentioning it, and we have some more details on the Twit Meetup at Dragon Con, Con which is now set for Saturday night, September fourth, at the Sundial Restaurant, the top of the Weston Peach Tree. In downtown Atlanta, sundialrestaurant.com, it rotates. Whoa. It's a rotating restaurant. So me and Schwood will be there. Veronica Belmont will be there because we're having the sword and laser crowd in as well. Uh, Super and there's, cool. And there'll be more details coming about the logistics of, of how, you know, when you should show up and, and lines and all of that stuff. But just pencil that on your calendar right now, September 4th, Saturday night at the Sundial Restaurant. On to our voicemails to 260 TNT Show. First one comes from a caller who has some news about Quake. How you doing, guys? This is Dave. Uh, just wanted to say you guys got a great show. And uh, listening to your show yesterday about the God Squad, um, I think I got a solution. Um, if he painted his car paisley and wore bell-bottom shoes, perhaps he could get away with using the God Squad in that manner. That's all. Bye. That's actually Dave, uh, who has the solution for the God Squad. Uh, Mod Squad! We got, a, we got a several emails suggesting the same thing. I think you're just inviting another copyright suit, though. I or don't know. I, I love the story. Police. 
Uh, yeah, that's possible. The bell bottoms would attract attention. Um, I love this story so much. First of all, my big question is, what's with the uh, religious in Wisconsin? Because I don't know if you remember this, but back in the tech TV days, they sent me out there to go cover a group of monks who felt that their calling in life was to refill inkjet cartridges. Oh, those monks. See, now I thought you, you when you were talking in the pre-show, I thought you were talking about the monks that were in the copier commercial. Like no, back in the eighties. Are... No, I know what you're talking about. It was like some some monks brew beer, some monks mm -hmm. grow gardens. These monks refilled inkjet cartridges. It was the strangest thing, and it was super popular. It got so huge that they had to outsource it. It was massive. But yeah. you know, I'm not sure that would be my religious calling. I'm just saying. Hey, it's it's cool though. I like the innovation. I like you know trying different ways of of, of spreading the word. That's uh, that's right. I'm digging it. All right, now we'll get to our caller who has some news about Quake, for those of you still wondering. What's the news hey, about Hey, Tom and crew, this is Jose from Florida. Um, just wanted to let you folks know, if you don't already know, uh, Quake Live Beta is no longer Quake Live Beta. It is just Quake Live, and they have two um, programs that you can uh, sign up for, premium for $1.99 per month or pro for three ninety nine per month. So check it out, guys. Thanks. All Bye. right. Good good tip. Thanks, Dave. I like the I like the news tip there. That's cool. We'll take all news tips. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. On to the email to TNT at twit.tv. Our first one comes from Theo. Says, regarding Wi-Fi and health, Tom, you basically got it right. But for a detailed discussion about where the science is at at the moment and the plausibility of Wi-Fi posing a health risk, I strongly recommend this blog entry by neurologist Stephen Novella. Uh, Stephen Novella is great. He's a really good writer, really good scientist. If you go to thenest.com slash neurological blog or look in our wiki at uh, wiki.twit.tv the, in the Tech News Today entry for this show notes, uh, you'll be able to find a link to this where he really goes through like, here are the studies that have been done. Here's what has been shown. Here's what we don't know. Here are the actual risks. And here is how we should evaluate the risk benefit analysis. And, and he makes the point as a scientist that there are always risks and there are always benefits. And the, and the question is, how much risk do you tolerate? And I, yeah. yeah. So I mean, and then and and I and he comes to the point that this is a tolerable risk. But take take a look at it. It's good good writing. I'm willing to accept that risk, given that I have about four routers within my immediate <laughs> range. Well, the, the big the big thing that he points out in his in his blog posting is that they have done several blind tests and have never been able to show that someone in a blind test can tell that the Wi-Fi is on. And Wi-Fi is, is, is so much lower radiation than cell phone radiation, which is where we have all the fears, right, of whether there's cell phone radiation going to our heads when we hold the phone. And he's like, Wi-Fi is so far beyond that, below that, that if, this, if cell phone radiation next to the head is in question and it looks like it probably doesn't have an effect, Wi-Fi radiation risk is so much less than that. Next email from Jason. He's in Rochester, go central New York. Uh, the guy from Navy, from the Navy on yesterday's show did have a good idea about randomizing the keypad for security reasons to prevent smudge attacks. However, that would not work on Android phones. The unlock screen is just a bunch of dots, so you can't randomize them. They all look the same. Of course, maybe they do randomize them and no one knows. It is Google. Uh, I believe the best security feature would be to require that at least one dot be used twice in the pattern. They have a strength meter on their passwords. Maybe they need to consider a strength meter for unlock patterns too or keep a chamois with you at all times actually i've had that chamois thing yeah just his keep, other keep idea clean, was people. good too keep it clean keep it clean keep it clean mike writes in and says i wanted to comment on the discussion the other day about preferring text messaging over voice calls and the idea that text messaging will overtake voice minutes as the primary option in cell phone plans what about instant messaging as more people get smartphones capable of running IM clients, don't you see more and more people ditching expensive text messaging for instant messaging that use your data plan? Of course, now they're putting caps on data, but well, see, cheaper. here's see, I thought this was going to happen. I guess it was about two or three years ago, and I text message a lot of people in the UK. I have a lot of friends and family there, and I thought, you know what? If we just all installed the same Yahoo instant message client on our phones or some instant message client, then we would all just do that and we wouldn't incur any text rates. But the problem is, I know this sounds so stupid, but interoperability. Um, and if you have different clients and you got to get everybody in the same one and you got to download on their phone, text message is all interoperable, no issues, just pay for it. Well, I, I mean, there are things like Beehive and Mebo that allow you to be on all of the different IM clients at once, right? 
but somebody has to be on their IM client on their phone too. And then you have to have background messaging, which we didn't have on iPhones for a long time. And then they have to be on a phone that has the ability to install an app with an IM. So I know what you're saying. The bottom line is just like the Spotify story. I'll pay for the ease of use and not having to manage this for my friends and family. Because oh. ultimately the geek in my family, being the geek in my family, I have to deal with all this crap anyway. Yeah, so it's too true. Now, um, if you will recall yesterday, uh, we had our friend Ryan from Hawaii who came on and did a great um, uh, uh, video. Gorgeous um, video. It was. It was about um, FM tuners in cell phones, and it was really good looking. So while that was happening, someone took a photo of him from the beach where he was at. And look at this. It is unbelievable. The photo. Here it comes. It's a wow. rainbow, man. Dude, it's like, over Ryan, man. Whoa, he's like the, the pot of gold at the end of the... What does it mean? Hey, you know what we've, we know what we've done now on this show? Double, but, double rainbow illusions. Oh, no. Yeah. Bananas and rainbows yeah. all coming together. I'm serious. I'm just like, really? So Ryan couldn't have got that rainbow in the background of his shot somehow. And just we wouldn't have heard a word he said at that point. But with as it was with the beach and the waves, if he had somehow been able to angle it up and get the rainbow, that would have been freaking awesome. You know, you're such a producer. He had diamond head and a, a <laughs> stand up paddle boarder in the background. And Tom's like, yeah, but he didn't get the rainbow. He didn't have the Moana Surfrider Hotel in the background. He could have at least gotten the rainbow. <sighs> Ah. No, it was it was brilliant though, and that that's a great picture. And and of course Ryan liked. It. I, I found it off Ryan's uh, uh, email because he was like, "Look, it was a fellow geek who caught me being geeky." And they uh, they have awesome. a great geek community on Oahu. I gotta say, there's some good folks out there. Those are my people. And Aloha. if you keep and Ryan did that with the the camera on his iPhone. So yeah. come on, send us your videos, guys. We want to see you. You have to look at our mugs all the time. We want to see you. Upload them to your favorite video hosting service, be it Vimeo or YouTube or something else, and then just email us the link, tnt at twit.tv, or you can just email us a regular typed out message if you want. That's fine, too. You can give us a call. Our phone number is free local call in Butler, Indiana, uh, or free on unlimited long distance plans, 260-TNT-SHOW. And, of course, you can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT, where you can find the link to the wiki that has all our show notes. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Well, the music stopped. You faded out so quick. <laughs> it was like... We were just getting into it. What got into us today? I don't know. <laughs>